Marcel swinging in and it's a fair ball and Wysetta wins it. Welcome to a special holiday edition of Sports Jam. I'm John Jacobson. I'm Jay Wilcox. Happy holidays. We're taking a look back at some of our favorite Sports Jam spotlight stories from the year 2018. We met some great young athletes this year and we're happy to revisit their stories. Let's get started with the story of a 2018 Champlain Park High School graduate who started on the basketball court. The Rebels boys had a younger team last winter after an appearance in the state final the previous season. But senior guard Josiah Strong emerged as a top-end player and leader. Jason Melillo profiled him in this spotlight story from February. Josiah Strong had the good fortune to learn from former Champlain Park players like JT Gibson and McKinley Wright. Both led the Rebels to the state tournament and are now playing Division I basketball. They're two guys that I've really been like, they kind of took me in when I came in as a freshman. They showed me what hard work is, so like they kind of brought me to workouts with them and t told me just little things that would help me. So it was a big influence coming into high school and it kind of helped me grow as a player and helped me in the position I am now. Now Strong is the man young players look to for guidance, but being a leader has been a work in progress for the senior. For most of Strong's time at Champlain Park, the Rebels have been a dominant team. But this season, they've struggled at times. I have to learn to especially be positive. That's something I've been working on, be positive with my teammates all the time. Because I'm used to being in a position where I don't really have to lead as much to other leaders. Josiah is seeing that this year that, yeah, sometimes, uh, you know, with 11 seniors graduating, it is a younger team. It doesn't mean that they're not talented. It's just they're less experienced. I think he's understanding, hey, you know, i got to take it easy. These guys aren't necessarily all at the Division I level right now um, and not ready, you know, kind of like the past few years of his high school experience. Strong contributes all over the floor. He's the Rebels' leading scorer at 22.4 points a game and also averages five rebounds and three assists per game. Last year I was kind of just like a straight, more of a straight shooter because I had McKinley and those guys, so my role was just to shoot. But this year I kind of get to show like more of what I've been working on, like my all-around scoring. Strong attacking against Walton he scores and a foul. Strong is working to get better as a defender where he says he can sometimes be lackadaisical. Head coach Mark Tuxer is already seeing the results of that effort. The defensive side I'm seeing him you know take things to heart and really work on that side of the game so he can become even more of a, a better well-rounded player. Strong knew he wanted to play basketball at the next level and several colleges recruited him. Strong discussed his options with his family and particularly his father Paul who is the head football coach at Park Center High School. Ultimately, Josiah committed to the Naval Academy, even though he'd never really considered serving in the military and was apathetic when Navy first approached him. When they first offered me, I was like, I had like no interest at all in going to the military or Navy or anything, but I went on a visit and then I just realized, like a lot of people don't realize that it's just regular pe everyday people. And all the other like athletes, for the most part, were kind of in the same position as me when they first got offered the opportunity. So I kind of just had, went in with open arms and open eyes, and it just it was an eye-opening experience. And I really liked the way it looked for my future. And I just had to think for like more than just basketball, and it, it was just a great decision. And they said, you know, we're not just offering him from athletics. You know, we're offering him for his academic achievement. And we've always stressed in our house that education is uh, primary. And so when he went and he played basketball with some of the guys and realized that these guys had other offers to go other places, but they chose to come to the Naval Academy. Champlain Park just wrapped up a three-game week with three wins, including a dismantling of sixth-ranked Park Center in which Strong scored 36 points. The Rebels are now 12-5 and, and Strong believes they're starting to peak and will be at their best come playoff time. Jason Melillo, CCX Sports. Champlain Park lost a heartbreaker in last March's Section 5-4A semifinals, falling to Osseo in double overtime. Josiah is playing the season for the midshipmen coming off the bench. Navy has a big game against rival Army on January 19th. The Armstrong Girls Swimming and Diving program has had a pretty good resurgence in the past few seasons. We met Falcon senior standout Grace Wolschlager in October. <laughs> She's into the final laps of a good high school career. Armstrong senior Grace Wolschlager is an excellent swimmer, but her place on the team goes far beyond skills. Supporting her teammates, uh, being a voice for her teammates to the, to the coaches, 
Um, she is always the first to stand up for one of her teammates. Um, she's obviously talented. Uh, her contributions in terms of scoring points and whatnot speaks for itself. Uh, she's the first person to wish someone a happy birthday. I mean, I wouldn't say that I set out to be a leader, um, but it's definitely something that I do try to be. It's not like a main goal. I would say a lot of the time it comes naturally. It's just kind of like a matter of like morals, but I definitely like taking the position as captain. I've definitely been focusing on what I'm doing a little bit more, just to make sure I'm a good influence on the girls and that I'm always kind of like a good role model. A lot of times girls, all being so respectful as this team is, don't necessarily want to voice something if they're not feeling so well or they're wondering why we're doing something. Uh, and I think they all know they can go to Grace. Grace will talk to us. We really respect that as coaches because it helps me be a better coach. Last season as a junior, Walschlager helped the Falcons to their first Northwest Suburban Conference title, a feat they repeated this past week. It's special for the program. We just got our first conference title and it was huge like to put up that banner and I think it's a really big motivation for this year as well just because we only have one year on that banner so in order to put another year on that banner with just going in with like a lot of confidence is super exciting for us. Like most top high school swimmers, Grace swims club too. She competes for lifetime. Club is a lot more slow progress because um, we don't have as many meets back to back like we would in high school. Um, it's also a lot more individual, it feels like, just because the team's so much bigger. There's so many more age groups with boys and girls. So it's, since it goes by age group, it becomes more of an individual thing. But the teammates, your teammates are definitely still there to help you out. Um, overall, it's just like a bigger environment. Bullschlager plans to swim in college and has whittled her list of possibilities to two local schools. I've narrowed it down to St. Kate's and the University of Minnesota so far. So I'm really excited for that. I have two very good options, so I think that'll be a pretty tough choice for me. Grace has competed in the past three state high school meets, mostly as part of relays. She candidly admits that nerves played a role when she placed 12th in the 100 butterfly last season. When I got into like individual events last year, I got a little scared about it because it was like at sections I go in knowing that I'll do very well. And then state, not only is your taper prolonged, but um, there's a whole new, new sections of swimmers coming in, so knowing that everyone else is just as fast as me, it shouldn't be a factor that scares me as much as it did, but it definitely freaked me out. So and the nerves got me last year, but hoping to come back stronger. The final season is winding down for Grace Wolschlager and her senior teammates, but she's determined not to make this a farewell tour kind of season. I've tried not to make a really big deal on it because I think it would just put, a, it's a little bit of a downer move to like mention that, oh, it's my last everything, you know, it kind of like puts a little dampener on whatever event you're doing with the team. So I think it's really important just to make it as fun as possible. Um, whether that be trying as hard as you can to go fast or just trying to have fun. Armstrong went on to finish fifth as a team at the state class AA meet. Grace was on two relays that placed sixth. She was also ninth in the 100 butterfly and 13th in the 200 IM. And she has decided to walk on to swim at the University of Minnesota. So a couple of athletes with great careers. We're just getting started here too on the show. All right, and time for our first break. When we come back, we to boys soccer standout will cap a brilliant prep career this fall. The Tatino Grace boys soccer team was state class A champion in 2017. The Eagles won a North, another Northwest Suburban Conference title this fall, but fell short in their bid to return to state. We met Eagles star Herbert Endeley in this spotlight from early October. Soccer coaches are always looking for scorers, guys who can create and put the ball in the net. Senior Herbert Endeley of Tatino Grace fits the bill pretty well. After netting 34 goals and 14 assists as a junior, he scored 15 goals with six assists in the Eagles' first 10 matches this fall. He's just got a great soccer sense. He knows what to do with the ball. He knows how to get open. Um, obviously, he can finish very well, but he's, he's great at finding his teammates and setting them up. Uh, I know last year he had most assists on our team, and this year he's leading right now, so he's, 
he doesn't just score goals, he gets the whole team goals. I feel like I've improved since last year. I feel like I'm helping the team in ways that I should and in ways that I expect myself to, so I'm really proud of myself and my teammates as well. Many soccer teams in the Northwest suburbs have African immigrants playing for them. Herbert did live on the continent, but his path is a little different than most. So I was born in Minnesota, but I moved to Tanzania when I was about five years old. Because my dad, my dad works for the United Nations, so we moved there. We lived there for about five years, and that's where I started playing soccer. And then we moved back in 2010 when I was about 10 years old, and then I just continued playing, and it just grew on from there. His parents are from the other side of Africa and Cameroon. The time in Tanzania was a great opportunity for Herbert. For my personal life, it was pretty fun because I've traveled, I've been to a lot of places and living there was pretty nice because I went to an international school, so I had friends from basically all over the world. And it's just nice, you know, seeing a different part of the world and how not just soccer, but how they live and what they do every day. And in terms of soccer, I just remember we just played every day. During recess, all we did was play soccer and after school, before school, so that's kind of how I got into it. On the Totino Grace team, Enderley is part of a great one-two offensive punch with Stevenson Lamar. Came to the U.S. from Haiti a few years back. Herbert and I, before we were a soccer teammate, we were playing first. So it's always helping me playing against him as his teammate and knowing that he got my back and I got his back. And, and he also pushed me to work harder because I'm always like saying, looking after him. He's been doing good things for the team. We play on the same club team, so that really helps us. And I think being friends off the field is very beneficial because it helps us. We have really good chemistry. I don't think I've had as much chemistry with anybody else I've ever played with, so it really helps us. Enderley will play college soccer next season at Indiana. I just think they have a great program, and in terms of like going professional, which I hope to achieve in the future, I think it was probably the best choice for me to choose. He has a, a pretty unique story in that um, I think we're in the day and age when they try to identify players as young as possible and then put them on the best teams and academies and those things. And um, in junior high, he was still playing at the C2 level on the club side of things. Um, so to, to go from there to a verbal commitment to Indiana is pretty cool. While they push each other to get better, the Eagles have a team first vibe that helps them be as good or better than the sum of their parts. A lot of people always ask me, Herbert and I, who's better, but first, what I say is that we both have the team. It doesn't matter who's better. If Herbert score, I have the team. If I score, I have the team. So the team come first. As Herbert Enderley and Tatino Grace take aim at matching last year's state class A championship, the mentality team wide is to be hungry. Going after the state title again, we don't think of ourselves as defending anything. We just want to go after it because last year was last year and nobody can take away what we accomplished last year. So we just want to go after the winning state again this year with the same ambition that we had last year. Endley was named Star Tribune Metro Player of the Year and Mr. Soccer for Class A, but of course, John, their title hopes for returning as champs didn't quite pan out. Blake knocked them off in a very tough section game. Yeah, it was a great section final. Was, he was such a fun player to watch in high school, wasn't he? And good luck to him next year at Indiana. Next up on Sports Jam and our year-end special, we meet one of the leaders of Champlin Park's state championship volleyball team. The Champlain Park volleyball team featured some big hitters this season, but the offense ran through setter Izzy Ashburn. Jason Melillo profiled the Rebels senior early this fall. The kill in volleyball is like the slam dunk in basketball or the home run in baseball. It's the highlight reel moment that elicits oohs and ahs from the crowd. But what's sometimes missed in the boom of a big kill is the essential role of the setter. It's almost like uh, the offensive line you know, they don't, get the, they don't get the glory. They see the running back scoring a touchdown or whatever else. So, Setter's having a great match. Most of the time, people don't notice her. And it's, and it's honestly probably the, the better we're playing, the less they're going to notice her just because things are in, in system and whatever else. But she's going to make plays that people don't recognize, again, because maybe, maybe we got a good dig and everybody sees, ooh, it's a good dig. Well, and the ball's set up to the hitter, and the hitter puts it away. And 
it's like, well, that's what's supposed to happen. Well, it's not that easy. So, um, you know, so maybe she doesn't get the recognition that way as a quote unquote setter, but uh, I think all of her teammates and people that pay attention to it on a daily basis really understand how special she is. Chaplin Park senior Izzy Ashburn is a great setter. In seconds, she can assess a defense, find the holes, and more often than not, put up a set for one of her teammates to terminate. It kind of happens natural at this point, but there's always things I'm working on with it. Seeing the other middle, knowing where I am on the court, knowing who just played the ball, who my options are in the front row. It's, there's a lot that goes into it, but during the game, it's not necessarily what goes through my head. It's more of a natural thing at this point. It makes it more comfortable just to, as a hitter because she really knows how to put the balls in the same spots and she's really easy to communicate with for different sets, so it really makes it fun to play with her. Ashburn started playing volleyball in second grade and she's continually improving. The kind of person who soaks up advice and guidance from teammates and coaches and puts it to use on the floor. But Ashburn's vision, her timing, her ability to run an offense is something that cannot be entirely taught. She's got a really high volleyball IQ and does a great job of um, decision processing, um, what what's works best here, and, and not only just like, hey, what works best here, but she does, she understands her teammates, she understands her hitters, like, how's that kid feeling right now? Like, I, I need to get her back into the game, I need to get her, I know she can get the next swing. And again, her volleyball IQ makes her understand the game a certain way, so uh, it's it's very hard to teach. You can give pointers, but they got to take it on their own, and she's done a great job with that. But I have confidence in all my hitters. I know if somebody gets blocked, they're going to step up, get the next one, and we're really close in that sense where we just trust in each other. I trust my passers more than anything, and I just know that everybody's got each other's back on the court. As good as Ashburn is now, she says there's a long way to go, a lot she can still learn. And that's one of the reasons she'll take her talents to the University of Wisconsin next year. It's just a great culture, and it's something that I'm so excited to be a part of. I'm ready to be a part of that and just grow with them, and the philosophy there is incredible. Champlain Park suffered its first loss of the season last week, a five-set battle against 2017 state champion Lakeville North. Ashburn says the girls actually took the loss pretty well and will use it to get better. I mean, this is why we schedule these matches that are tough. We know they're going to be a tough team. We knew that they were going to come out strong, and we know what we need to work on. We do it early on so we know, and we have more time to work on it throughout practices, and we're really excited to get to work on those things. And what a finish it was to the season for Izzy and the Rebels. They went on to win Champlain Park's first ever state championship in any sport, defeating Egan in five sets for the Class 3A title. We're back with more of our Sports Jam Holiday Special after this. Boys volleyball is gaining a foothold here in Minnesota. It's been around for years through private clubs, but for the first time last spring, it was offered as a sport at a few local high schools too. Luke Nelson is a junior at Wysenna High School. He's played six years of volleyball and was excited when he found out he would have the chance to play as part of a high school team this year. Every single year you're playing with the same guys and playing against them and you know being able to play against new guys and against different places and getting to travel more and you know ha having more fans there as well and getting you know you know more cheering and new people into the sport it's just it's so much fun just to see these guys grow as well. The sport is just at the club level at a few local schools. The Osseo North Metro team is actually a co-op featuring players from eight high schools including Osseo Park Center, Brooklyn Center and Wyzetta and featuring players of different skill levels. It's been a challenge, but it's also been really fantastic. The, the most amazing part, though, is watching the other teams improve. Every, every week, they, the, all, the other, all the other teams are just getting better and better. Um, it's, it's just an amazing event, and watching the boys really enjoy it, and seeing the athletes that are participating is just absolutely fantastic for the sport. Joe Yang is a senior at Park Center, and had only played volleyball with family and friends prior to the spring. Experience here has helped develop his skills. What I've improved is uh, my timing. When I go and hit the ball to get over the ball, and um, the way that I pass the ball to my setter, with it's it was pretty bad when I first started here. But now that I think of it, it got him way better than before, thanks to my team. Hopkins is another of the 20 plus high schools featuring varsity and junior varsity teams. Coach Jeff Hochstein grew up playing boys volleyball in Chicago, where it's a big sport. 
He sees the potential for its growth here in Minnesota. It's such a girls volleyball hotbed right now that boys volleyball has really picked up steam and there's tons and tons of guys who want to play and we're getting them out on the court and we're seeing that these guys can they can ball. Um, you know, balls are getting hit hard, balls are getting dug, the skills are there. There's talent, there's skill, there's guys who have been playing outdoor their whole lives and it's awesome to finally get these guys on a court with six teammates and playing volleyball. Sam Eklund plays varsity soccer and Nordic skis at Hopkins and wanted a spring sport to compete in this year. His teammate Charming Bang had to be talked into playing, but he's glad he came out. I found out by my friend and she was like, you guys should join. And then I didn't join because I was like, huh? oh well, I don't really want to play. But my brother, he joined and then he kind of introduced me into it. He's like, you should come. I'm like, I came to practice once and I liked it. I'm definitely glad that it was during my last year so I get to try it out. Um, but yeah, it's been super fun and kind of learning with everybody. Even your opponents are at the same level kind of you are. So all the games have been super competitive, um, which has been really nice. Teams generally play matches two nights a week and practice once or twice a week. One, two, three, four. The two month season goes through the end of May. The players are trying to grow the sport are finding out a lot of their friends don't even know their team exists. When I bring it up, they're like, oh, you play here at YZ? And I said, no, YZ doesn't have a team. They don't even know that we don't have a team. They don't. They think that we have a team when I mention it. So they're completely confused when they realize they're like, that like I play for a different school. So they don't even know anything about it. And you know, I bet the most commonly asked question after I say I play volleyball is they're like, it's not a girl's sport. Whenever they ask me what I do, I'd be like, I play volleyball for Asio, and they'd be like, what, we got a volleyball team? And I'm just like, yeah, y'all didn't know about it, but I did. <laughs> but everyone here is excited about boys volleyball. Asio North Metro coach Gintis Garces is looking forward to the years ahead. You know what, I'd love to see this as a sanctioned sport. I think it's an amazing sport that a lot of people just don't really get exposed to. I would love to see us also being able, um, as the boys sport as a whole, have players from Minnesota competing at a national level where they're playing in colleges and club tournaments and getting a chance to really, you know, let the country know what, what great athletes we have here in Minnesota. Osseo North Metro went on to win the state championship in that first season. The hope is that more teams can be formed this coming spring. We'll wrap up the show in a moment. What makes your community feel like home? Is it knowing what's happening in your neighborhood? Or when people know your name? Connections make us a community. For more than 30 years, Northwest Community Television has connected citizens, neighbors, even sports fans through video. You can learn about the latest news through our truly local newscast. We cover and air around 150 high school sporting events every year. For our cities, we air parades and city meetings that you can watch whenever you want. Then, any citizen of our cities can create and share their own original content. We'll even teach you how to use the equipment too. We have always provided you with a connected community experience. And as life gets busier than ever, we will continue to engage, inform, and inspire through CCX Media. So you can stay connected to the place you call home. Don't miss the Maple Grove Polar Plunge to support Special Olympics on Saturday, February 2nd. Find out more at ccxmedia.org under cities and in the community. Looking for local? Even more local? CCX Media gives you the option to connect with your community on multiple levels. CCX Create welcomes you, community residents, to connect and experience television in an exciting way. The free TV classes we offer will have you on your way to creating TV, and our wide variety of content can be watched at home or on the go. Connect to what's happening in your community. Visit ccxmedia.org. And that will do it for this Sports Jam special. Thanks for your support all year. We'll be back with our regular show the week of January 7th. We'll see you then.